There are three levels of instructional learning, concrete, representational, and abstract. So concrete is seeing something, seeing the physical. Representational is when you're creating it. You're creating something that is representational. But the highest level of knowledge and learning is abstract, when children are able to apply that knowledge in a different way. One thing that's very unique about our program is that we try as often as possible to get to that abstract stage, where children can really apply the skills or knowledge in a way that's going to challenge them to think of something differently. Hi, I'm Emma Whitman, the director at Rye Presbyterian Nursery School. Rye Presbyterian Nursery School has a long-standing tradition of providing excellent early childhood education for young children. We believe in the Reggio Emilia philosophy to early education. Instead of showing children exactly what to do, we let them explore, we let them experiment, we let them take risks, they learn by doing. Play is about figuring out how to move an idea forward. So when they're playing in the classroom, they're doing so much more than just playing. Take the train, for example. One day I walked into Mrs. Kumar and Mrs. Fiore's class. in the middle. What letter do you think train starts with? T. 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 Good. So we're going to write train here. This is our main word. And let's talk about what we know about train. So they have wheels. What else do they have? Uh, they have steam coming out of there. Oh, steam. Engine. An engine. Fire. Fire. Coal. Cool. Oh, so there's different ways that a train can run. I'm Mrs. Kumar and this is my co-teacher, Mrs. Fiore. We've been working together for nine years. This year, our class studied the New York Public Library, the train system into New York City, and Grand Central Station. While the children were playing in the blocks and they were building bridges and buildings, we were listening to them as they were doing this. And their favorite picture that we put up in the block center was the one of the New York Public Library. They loved right. the lines in the front, all the steps leading up. When we looked at the actual picture of the library, we talked about the materials first of what we would need and how to build it and then add to it. Their biggest question was, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do this? And the pillars, if the pillars weren't sticking, how are we going to keep the pillars sticking? And there were details that they wanted to add that we mm -hmm. never would have even thought of. When we yeah. showed them the photograph, the kids zoned in on that light post yes. that was in the front, and they really yeah. wanted to make the light post. And that was so great for fine motor. They were yeah. wrapping the wire. I mean, the big thing at the end, we thought it was done. We thought yeah. the library was done, and yeah, they insisted it, that you know. we had people. Yes, the people. We have to have people. <laughs> Where are the people checking out the books? Yeah. Where's the librarian? One big question that the children had about trains was how they worked. Electricity is a very complex concept, especially for four-year-olds. Scott, did you have a question? Can yeah, I say What's something? Your question? How can trains, how, how can trains move? How do trains move on the train tracks? They move with electricity. There's two motors in each train. There's a motor in the front and a motor in the back. And they get their electricity from the third rail, it's called. And there's a man, the motorman, that controls how fast and how slow the train goes. That led us to an electricity study. What are you guys talking about in your classroom? Train. And what do you need in order for trains to work? Electricity. Steam. Now, um, well, you might go on a steam one, but when you go into New York City, what do those trains use? Not steam. Not steam. What do they use, Trent? Fire. Is no. Fire? No? What do you think they use? Um, to get around? Electricity. Electricity. The leg was so fast. 
the electricity goes really fast into But light goes faster and then electricity. Light is the fastest thing. My main um, focus was to get them to understand open and closed circuits. When the circuit is open, then the lights go out. If you open that up and take it off the nail, what's going to happen? See, the circle is open, uh -huh. but when I close it, if the light goes on, that means the circuit is closed. All the energy is going from in here, and it comes all the way through, okay. and then it goes all the way back. What's happening? It's blinking because the energy is going in a complete circle and it keeps on going and then into the and going and going and going. So we have been investigating the library in New York City and we were talking about how would you get to the New York City Library? Um, train. And you said we'd have to take a train. to get on the train. What do you have to give them? Money. You have to get a ticket. Where do you get the ticket? From the ticket center. Do you give the money to a person or do you give the money to a machine? Oh, that's a really mm. good question. Give the money to the machine, not person. So if you're on the train, right, you have your ticket, they hold and you hold it, it, and then someone comes around, and what do they do? How do they know that they you have a ticket? They punch your hole. And these are what the tickets look like that you need to, like, to ride the train. That's a ride ticket. What is so, that's it's right. Not a ride ride. Ride. That's right. Ride. This color ride. one is the Porchester because it has a P. So there are different What's stations. <laughs> So what do you think? Is that a great idea? We're going to add that to our train center. So now if you want to ride the train, you're going to need a ticket. And who are we going to need to take the ticket? The conductor. It's going to New York City. All aboard the Chester train. We're going to New York City. Next stop is New York City. New York City. New York City. New York City. No, you're not. The dramatic play was seen as they acted out what they learned. I'm going here. You're going to what, New York? And through all of it, you're incorporating all the learning goals they need for kindergarten. Literacy was every step of the way. Writing the word librarian checkout, writing each other's names, the children writing the signs for the dramatic play area. When they made the train station, they wrote a schedule, they wrote all the names of all the stops. We can show children pictures of a train. We can talk to them a lot about trains. We can even ask them questions. But when we gather their questions about trains, when we let them figure out how to build a train station in their classroom, how to exchange tickets, how to collect money, how to build schedules, all of those things, they learn by doing. And the next step to that is taking them into the city, taking them to the point where they can actually be on a train.
decided to make a book with the students. We took the photographs from the trip, the photos we took of them, right. and we printed them out and we put them in a book, and they wrote the words underneath. And as they were looking through the book, even then, right. more came out of them as they were identifying uh, the pictures. Remember those yeah. lines? What were their names? Patience and fortitude. Riding on that train into the city is such a pivotal moment for a young child because they're seeing everything they've thought about in action. They're seeing the purpose behind all their experiences. When I went on the train, uh, we there was, the doors were closing, so I was on the last person on, and and Paige, we went on the same time, and the doors were closing, and then they shut the doors, and then and then this train speeded, and then super fast. I can see the constellation. When a child is standing next to someone in Grand Central, and then they go up to the atrium, they look down, and they see that person, and that person is this small. Um, we saw people, and their people looked like tiny, tiny ants. What it really teaches the child is about the enormity of Grand Central itself, and the enormity of that moment. They're learning that what they do in the classroom is so important, it's so meaningful. So the child is not only excited about something, but they're also knowledgeable about it. That empowers them to drive their own learning, to think of things deeper, to ask more questions, to really see themselves as researchers, as learners. That's Reggio. And that's what we do at Rye Presbyterian Nursery School.